Um, so basically the way that recording works is like you get them for like the whole class, like basically on our um, class course list, like all the videos will be listed. Um, those will always be at those links. You can download them, do whatever you want to do with them. They're basically yours at this point. Um, I do, once the class is over, put them up on YouTube. Um, it helps me like promote the class and there are lots of people who are even in time zones that can't ever take these classes because um, time zones are like a real thing that actually prevents people from taking a class at 7 p.m. on the East Coast. Um, so they have access to it too. And that those people come in, join our Slack community and they're, they're there as well. So um, yeah, so videos will go up on YouTube like in a couple, like basically a couple weeks after the class is over. Um, but do let me know if that's a, that's a problem for you or you just don't want your face shown. That's totally fine. Um, cool. So um, a couple of things just about this class, just so you're aware. Um, this class is like pretty experimental. Um, I started teaching this about a year ago. Um, and the class I taught a year ago was very, very different than the class I teach now um, for a variety of reasons. But basically, like, this has become sort of the sort of intro level machine learning class. Um, it's the class I teach because Runway has now become a pretty stable product and, like, you can do a lot of stuff with it now. Um, so we will use Runway to basically sort of learn basic machine learning stuff um, as well as making art with machine learning. Um, but there, once you get hooked on Runway, there will be many other opportunities to learn other things. Um, that I cover in other classes. But I should also say, like, if you thought signing up for this class, you were going to get something different, you're always welcome to message me and be like, hey, I thought I was going to learn X, Y, or Z. Um, and if we can't cover it in this class, I usually have materials, like, on my YouTube channel that you can check out. Um, so this class is also, like, pretty small. There's only nine of us or ten of us total in this class. So um, you are totally able to sort of, like, determine the direction of the class. So there might be times where you know, maybe next week or the week after, I might just like pull the Slack channel or pull us in um, in here, like to see if people want to learn a particular thing or learn something else. And um, yeah, so it's like pretty, pretty flexible to like, we can mold the class to whatever you're interested in learning. Um, I do have a couple of objectives to this class. And some of this is just sort of, again, things I've learned over time, but also things I would like people to get out of this class. So the first is like, I really want you to learn through making. Um, like I have found that the number one way to learn stuff in machine learning, especially in machine learning art, is just start making it. Um, so much of like what goes on in these courses is like people like will be like, oh, I bet I can make this. And then they try and like, this didn't work. What, what happened here? What do I do differently? Or what do I do to change this? Um, so really like making stuff in this class is really, really important because it's, you will assume that certain things will work away a certain way and they, they probably won't. And um, I'll also say that like I've now taught probably about 100 folks like in different machine learning stuff. And I'm still learning from the examples you're making. There are so few people doing this type of work that just making stuff, you like learn a lot from making it. Um, and like the community as a whole will learn from making it too. So um, it's pretty important that like, I know everyone has different schedules, people have different like work life balance types of things. Um, but if you can, like I definitely recommend making stuff in this class. It is the easiest way to learn it and you'll get the most out of class that way. Um, I do want people to understand sort of the basic concepts of machine learning, um, as well as like how machines see or machines think about images. Um, we don't go too deep into like the math or the theory behind machine learning in these classes, but I do try to touch on the, the top level concepts because in my experience, um, especially for folks new to Runway, Runway seems like it's really straightforward and you will think it's like, oh, it's like Photoshop and you'll try stuff. And it won't work and you won't really know why until you learn sort of the basics of machine learning and how it works. So most of today will be about like the basics of machine learning and that'll help you sort of understand how to use Runway in the future. Um, and then lastly, like there is a little bit of like pedagogy around like learning to learn, which is like, we only have five weeks together. Um, it's, a pretty in, it's a pretty intensive course to get through a lot at you. Um, but when we're done, like you might decide you wanna learn more about it. Um, and, I think the last week will mostly be me sort of presenting like other materials that you can check out, um, other classes I offer, other folks offer. Um, so there'll be a lot of stuff about like sort of like how do you keep up with this? Uh, because it is a really fast changing uh, field, um, especially with the ML art side as well. Um, so we'll do a little bit of that um, as we go through class. Um, so here's this, the schedule for uh, just the next five weeks. Um, like I said, today is gonna be mostly getting us set up. We'll do a little bit of ML basics and we'll play around a little bit in runway. Um, next week, we're going to do uh, some inspiration. So I'm going to pull some materials from other classes that I've taught, just some projects I've seen on the web. Um, it'll be all stuff that people can make in Runway. So hopefully it'll be like enough to sort of get you like excited about some materials to make um, projects to start thinking about for yourself. 
uh, and then we'll look at more models inside Runway, and we'll talk a little bit about what models are in the, in the near future. Um, week three, we're going to look at uh, chaining and data sets. So there will be a class uh, in week four that where we actually train our own model, and I'll explain a little bit if you're not familiar with what training is, I'll explain a little bit what, what that is in, uh, later today. Um, you will be sort of required, I guess, if you want to, if you want to do this, you'll be required to build your own data set. Um, I'll walk you through a really basic example. Um, but if you have an idea for something more specific, like let me know and we can work through it. Um, the data sets thing does require, it doesn't really necessarily require code. Um, it requires you can follow steps in an application called terminal, which is the, the screen or the app that most people are using and writing code in that you will think you're writing code, but I promise you, uh, I will make it as painless as possible or painless as possible. Yes. Painless, um, not painful, um, as painless as possible. Um, so, you know, it's basically sort of up to you how, how deep you want to get into making your own data set. Um, and we'll talk about that in week three. Um, but you might want to start thinking about like, where do I find a collection of images? So in this case, a data set for us will be a collection of images. Um, usually around 500 is a good number. So like, that's a lot of images. Um, and we'll talk about techniques to get there um, when, when we do that. And then uh, so week four, we'll be actually training our own model. Um, I'll walk you through the steps of doing that. It's probably one of the more fun parts of Runway. Um, so it is something that like, I definitely encourage people to try out. Uh, week five is going to be exports, interpolations, and P5.js. Um, that'll just mostly be like, how do we take our uh, trained model and do fun stuff with it? Um, so this will be like some advanced level stuff, like, but again, you won't really need to know how to code. Like, I'm going to have templates set for you in P5.js. <clears throat> so you'll be able to just like enter in a couple lines of uh, variables, and then you'll be able to run some stuff. Um, also, as a part of this class, uh, you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me. That'll be like a 20 to 30 minute session where if you have specific questions about the work you're doing, um, we can set up some time to just talk through like what, how you might approach it or what you might do. Um, so those are usually scheduled. I like basically put up just a calendar, calendar link <clears throat> and people are allowed to just sort of like sign up whenever. Um, so we will have like one of those sessions. So I would generally recommend that you save that until at least week four or week five, um, just because by that time you'll have gotten all the material and then you can say like, oh, I really want to do this. Um, but people are also welcome to just schedule them whenever. You're also welcome to like DM me on Slack or email me at any time. I'm happy to like help out wherever I can. Um, so yeah, just like feel free to reach out if you have questions about anything in particular. Uh, so there are like homework expectations in this class, just in the sense of like, if you wanna get the most out of this class, like here is what I would expect from you. Um, it's usually like three to six hours of homework every week. Um, and I just personally find like the more you invest in your homework or the more you invest in like, trying out the things I recommend you do, um, you'll definitely learn more in this class. You'll also like come into class like the next week with way more questions about stuff. So um, in my experience, it's just like, if you do the homework and you try stuff, you will the, immediately like have a million questions for me. Um, and that's sort of the point. Um, but basically like you should, uh, you should play with stuff as much as possible. Um, and there might be things in Runway that I don't cover in this class, but if you have questions about it, I can do the best I can to help. So there are ways to like manipulate text as well as like, um, do like body tracking and things inside runway. That's like sort of outside of like how I do this class, but if you're interested in it, I'm happy to like send you some materials on how to do things with that. Um, so I do know that, you know, right now is a pretty interesting time in the world and everyone has their own sort of like uh, work-life balances that they need to meet. So um, I have a couple approaches for this class. Any of these are valid and like I have there's no grades at the end of this class. There's no me judging you at the end of the class. So like you should feel free to do what you feel like is best. Um, but I do actually recommend like if you have the time, um, which actually might be more, you might, people might have more time or less time. I don't know what everyone's uh, life situation is, but um, following along with each assignment and doing every homework assignment is like generally like hands down the best way to learn. Um, I've set up the homework assignments to be doable within a week, um, but also just to sort of like challenge you to try stuff. Um, so that's totally, uh, that's a, like a great way to learn. Um, the other approach is like, if you really don't want to play with every individual model inside of Runway, um, you can think of one big project to try to do by the end of class. Um, and so you can sort of follow along. And then once you figure out the project, just dive into that really deeply. Um, and then lastly, you know, I got no problem with this if you're really busy, but um, you're always welcome to just like sit here and hang out with lectures and not make anything. I don't think you'll learn as much, but like you're more than welcome to try it. Um, and some people I know it's like, this class was finally available. They got to sign up and it just happened to be the worst time for them to sign up. So they just want to like get the lectures and then they'll, they'll deal with it up on their own schedule. And that's totally fine. So, so materials for this class are, um, there's a class site. So inside of our Slack channel, 
um, in the description. Um, there's a link to a GitHub page that just has all the links for the class. Basically, what I try to do is every night after class is over, um, I will update that with the slides as well as when the video is finished recording, um, I'll get a download for that and I'll put that up on a drive and then give it, make, act, make that available to people. Um, usually what'll happen is this class will have like a Q&A at the end of every class um, and that will generate some more links and things for me to add. Um, and I'll try to add them to the class page. Um, in previous sessions, I've just added them to Slack, but then they get lost as we go through like the constant Slack chatter. So I'll generally try to put links and interesting additional tidbits of information on our class site. Um, that way it's sort of like the source of truth. So if you're ever wondering like, hey Derek, where do I find this thing? Or I remember you talking about this, but I don't remember where it is. It's usually on the class site. Um, videos, you will get videos for every class. Um, in some cases, I'll also have demos that are recorded for like, uh, like I might just like offhandedly say like, hey, if you're interested in this, I'm not gonna cover it in today's session, but you can go to this URL and watch a video about it. Um, so you'll, all those materials are free and available for you. Um, slides are also for you. Um, like I said, notes are, I will try to take class notes, um, basically mostly out of our Q&A when, when it's possible. I bug. Um, and then uh, obviously like I talked about with Slack, um, it's optional, but I do find that um, it's a nice way to like sort of like talk to other folks and see what they're making and figure out how they made stuff. And uh, you can learn sort of tips and tricks from each other. Um, so I do want to uh, talk a little bit about myself. Um, so I've been teaching at SSHH for about a year now. Um, I basically like what happened is Braulio was like, I want to make a bot. And I talked to Braulio and I said, hey, like, let me make a bot for you. So I stopped over at SSHH to sort of show him what we can make. And he was like, this is cool. Um, why don't you just teach a class and I'll be the first student to sign up for it. So uh, we did that. Uh, that class sold out pretty quickly. So we've done, I think this is the fourth or fifth SSHH ses session. Um, so it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I really love working with them. And even though I teach all my own classes now outside of um, SSHH, I always like, like to do at least one session a quarter um, with them. because it's just a lot of fun. And we bring in lot, like lots of cool designers like yourself sign up for it. Um, so my history really isn't like that far away from most of you. I am a product designer by day. I work at MailChimp. Um, I used to work at the New York Times. I used to work at a bunch of other startups as well. Um, and so my job is by, the, by day is being a designer and I just got really into machine learning a couple of years ago. Um, about two and a half years ago now, um, I took a class at SFPC, the School for Product Computation. I don't know if anyone is familiar with it, um, but it's a really cool school in New York. They did a machine learning sort of intensive. It was not unlike this class, except it was like five days for like four hours every night. And I met all these great people um, and they sort of just threw a ton of work at me. Um, so if you're not familiar with any of these names, I recommend like looking them all up. Um, all of them are working in machine learning or similar adjacent fields. Um, so just a lot, like a lot of cool work that they all produce. So I would definitely recommend checking them out. Um, I sort of took like a three or four month break after that class because it was like so intense. I needed like a break. Uh, and then I got back into doing work and I really, really enjoyed it. So this is some of the first couple of machine learning pieces that I made, which I look back on now and I like laugh at how, I don't, I don't want to say bad, but like just how like, I don't know, um, naive they are in some ways, but um, it's still really interesting. So on the left here is what's called a, a DC GAN. Um, that's pretty similar to a GAN that we're gonna make in, uh, in Runway, but it's a little different. On the right is a style transfer uh, image. And we'll talk a little bit about style transfer, I think next week. Um, but style transfer is basically like taking a image that already exists and then applying a style on top of it. So um, yeah, so this was early work for me. Um, I now like sort of do a mix of my own artwork as well as some illustration commissions. This is a piece I did for the Baffler. Um, so you'll see like even my illustration work isn't entirely machine learning. It's like found an, find an old vin vintage image, do some Photoshop work to it, and then bring it into machine learning models and um, generate some imagery from it. So, you know, all of your skills as a artist or designer or, you know, even software engineer, like they'll all still like be really helpful in this class. Um, you won't really miss out on anything. So um, it's all really going to help out your work. And then it's just about like finding that last step to sort of do the machine learning part of it. Um, so these are some other images that I've, I've done before. Um, interesting, I think this might be like the wrong slides. Let me see if I have the other slides here. Um, maybe I copied the wrong thing. I had some other work I was gonna share, but anyway, um, I should also just say that if you haven't um, checked out my Instagram account, um, I usually post like a lot of my day-to-day -day work here. So if you're ever interested, um, you can check out some stuff um, that, will work, that I'm working on. Um, obviously this is the piece that Braulio and I did together uh, as sort of, um, just a demo for the class. Um, there's a bunch of stuff in here from things that we have 
done in my previous runway classes. So if you're ever interested, be like, how did you, did you produce this image in runway or not? Like I can always talk you through those sort of things. Um, but let me see if I have, you know, a lot of my images, a lot of my work now like deals with like some very like visual um, sort of stuff. This is like, basically this is like leveraging machine learning tools and using the stupid, like machine learning is kind of dumb. So a lot of times you can leverage that to create like really interesting glitch effects and those sort of things. Um, yeah, so like you're always welcome to ask me about my work. Um, I try not to talk about it too much in this class because I really want it to be more on like giving you guys information. But if you ever are interested, you get, you're welcome to like ask me about certain pieces. Um, yeah. So um, that's done. A, that's been enough talking. We're at like 35 minutes of me just talking nonstop. Um, so I want to do a really quick demo. Um, so what I'd like everyone to do um, is I want you to think of a sentence, any sentence whatsoever. Um, I want you to think about it. Um, and once you have a good sentence in your mind, I want you to put it in the Zoom chat for me. And while, while you guys think of a good sentence, I'm going to go ahead and start up Runway and uh, we'll get to working on some things. All right, so if you have a sentence, please put it in the Zoom chat. Is this a sentence of anything? It is a sentence of anything, yes. Okay. I'm being specifically vague for a reason, but we'll see. Put in anything. I mean, I had a really good pizza one ready to go, and Matthew just slid right in. Still we can it. we can try multiple pizza examples. There's multiple there's always, pizzas. There there's many opportunities for pizza here. When there's more than one pizza, it means it's a party, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So I am. Um, I'm just going to grab a couple of these, and we're going to play with this. So this is a model. Um, that generates images from text. It is called Attention GAN. It is available inside of Runway if you just uh, search for A-T-T-N-G-A-N. Um, this isn't a, uh, a Runway demo. We'll do that a little bit later. I just want to get everyone like to make see some fun things uh, that we produce. Um, so the way Runway works, if you're not familiar, is uh, you load up a, what's called a model. We'll talk about models in a minute. Um, you get it running, uh, and once it's ready to run, you can start to play with it. So this is now running. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about what it's costing me to run this, that sort of thing in a minute. Um, but basically, once you have a model here, you have inputs and you have outputs. So I want an input of a caption, so I'm going to grab some of these sentences. Um, let's start with one, let's start with a pizza example, let's just sort of see. So I'm going to grab Matthew's, uh, I could really go for some pizza right about now. And I'm going to paste this in. Okay, it generated pizza. We've got a pizza here. Um, a pizza, a pizza looking thing. Let's, let's not say it's completely pizza. Um, why don't we try it? Let's try, uh, let's try Judd's and see if we get a different pizza. So his sentence is, everyone deserves a good pizza. That looks less pizza-like, but it's interesting. Okay, so, uh, well, we saw one pizza and a non-pizza. Um, let's try another one of these. Uh, I'm gonna try Melissa's, uh, the tiger jumped over the moon. And if anyone has a particular favorite sentence they like from here, you feel free to shout it out and I can add it. Uh, so the tiger jumped over the moon. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna try Kara's, we're waiting on some orange groves. Okay, I see some orange-like things. Um, let's try one more here. So. Um, why don't I try, well, okay, I like, I like the abstractness of Eric's uh, sentence, which is get busy living or get busy dying. Let's try that here. Okay. Um, I, I don't know what that, what that image is. Uh, okay, so let's try one more here. So I, um, so attention GAN as a model, it has been done what's been called, it's been trained. It's been trained on certain images and certain text. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is, because I, I cheated and I know how this model works, I'm going to put in a sentence that I know will generate some image-like thing. So um, I'm going to try uh, the dog played with a ball at the beach. Okay, well, I got no, neither a dog. I, well, now I have a dog. Okay, so I got a beach scene here. When I add a period, um, I get a dog, uh, a dogish like thing. So I'm interested to hear from you guys. What did you think about this example? Anyone can speak up. My least, go ahead. I thought it was cool how it kind of changed as you typed. Just, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, so we could try just like the dog play it and see what happens. So there's kind of a dog-like shape. Anyone else have thoughts about these, this model? It's very blobby. Very blobby, yeah. My brain's just trying to deconstruct like what's actually happening and like why you're getting a different result with just like adding a period or adding the um, things like that. Um, so it's very interesting. Yeah. It seems interesting that there's like um, maybe predetermined outcomes for some of the things or the sentences or you're like, well, I know I'm going to get some kind of result from this type of a sentence because maybe the machine has learned what a dog is or something along those lines or a ball. Yep. Yeah, totally. Uh, so I think, uh, I think Kara, you said it was blobby. I, I describe this model as shitty. Uh, it kind of sucks, right? Like if I were to tell you that like, um, I have this machine learning model that can generate images from text. I don't know how many of you would be like happy with this being the, the end result, right? Um, and I think this is sort of the funny thing that we learn about machine learning, right? And you see this all over the news every day is like, someone says, oh, I've invented this machine learning model that does all these things. And then like some reporter goes in and looks into it and is like, actually, it's just like, it's screwing up everyone's lives, right? And this is an example of like a machine learning model where like it claims to do all these really cool things. And in the end, it like doesn't really do any, doesn't really do it in a good way. Or like, I think it's interesting what the images it produces are. Uh, but it's clearly like not, not accurate. Um, and I think like we will see this over and over again uh, in all of the runway materials is that it never produces exactly what you expect it to. Um, it is always going to be dumb on some level. So I think Judd had asked like, it's really interesting that when you add a period to the end of beach, you get a different image. Um, and I have a theory about why that is. So let me just retype this. So the dog played with the ball at the beach. Um, and I get a beach scene, right? As soon as I put a period at the end, um, I do not get that beach scene or I get like something far less beachy. Uh, I believe that is because the way this is trained is it trains on words. Uh, and as soon as I add a period, it does not know the word beach with a period. It knows what the word beach is, but it doesn't know beach plus a period. Um, my guess is that there's some, you know, they haven't trained this well enough to know that like, like ignore periods. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting. Like this is stuff where like, once you know how the model works, you can start to like sort of like pinpoint like places where maybe it was undertrained or mistrained or like they didn't think all the way through things, right? And if you're a product designer, uh, you know that that is like something that like you always do, right? You always forget about some edge case um, and it just happens. And the same is true with this stuff too. Like there's, you know, these are mostly done by scientists as like quick examples or quick ideas and they don't really like play it out all the way through. Um, so this is just a quick little example of just sort of like some things you can do in Runway, but also like, Lower your expectations of what you're going to get. Um, I am glad I don't present this class as a way to like lower your expectations and take my class. Um, but in some ways, this is like kind of what happens here. Um, your expectations will not always be met in the way you expect. Um, so yeah, so like this was just a fun little example. You can always come in and play with this. I'll show you how to set up some models and set a runway uh, a little bit later. Um, but yeah, just uh, just keep an eye on like sort of how these things work. Um, so with that, I want to present a little bit just about like how machine learning works, right? So we saw a quick demo of like sort of how these things operate. Um, but clearly like I have a lot of friends who will like be like, oh, I'm gonna start using Runway. And they open up the Runway and they find the attention gam model. And they're like, what the hell is this? I don't like, I just want an image. How do I get an image out of this thing? So we're gonna talk a little bit about how machine learning works. Um, some of the basics of machine learning, um, get you enough up to speed that you could like talk to someone 
um, who doesn't know anything about machine learning and look like you know a lot. So, all right. So everyone thinks about machine learning and they think this, right? Everyone thinks about like AI and this is what they think of. Um, clearly you saw that the model that I just played with is definitely nowhere near being Terminator level, right? It can't even produce a dog or it can't even produce a ball. So we're clearly pretty far away from having Terminator like come to our house and knock on our door or whatever. Um, so when, when people talk about Terminator or supercomputers or other things, they're generally talking about a thing that we call general AI. Um, general AI is robots, it's supercomputers. Um, it is pretty much largely thought to be bullshit and will never happen, at least in our lifetime. Um, there may be some weird way in which it does happen, but pretty generally assume like it's just not gonna happen. Um, what we're gonna look at uh, for the next couple weeks in this class is what we call narrow AI. Um, and that is code that does one thing really well or one thing okay. Um, more than likely, it does one thing okay-ish. Uh, but the idea is that it does one thing really well. Um, so, you know, in the case of uh, some examples, we have an example of converting a horse to a zebra. So this was a model produced maybe about three years ago. Um, and it, like, pretty much blew a lot of people away, right? Because it's like, to be able to convert a horse to a zebra. That's pretty amazing. That's, our, that's much better than our like text to images, right? Like that actually looks kind of like a zebra. Um, so this is code that literally does one thing well. It translates images of horses to images of zebras and that's it. Um, you can put a human face in here and you get a zebra human and it's pretty weird, but I don't think that's like generally the, the idea of the model. Um, I won't shoot. Also this class ends up being like mostly um, me showing, showing horror imagery like it's like basically like the most disgusting thing I can show you is what I end up showing in this class. Um, so in this example, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip the, the weird human zebra hybrid um, and just show you a cool model that produces a horse from a zebra or a zebra from a horse. Um, the way it, so the way this works is that the, ML, the machine learning process is essentially three parts. They're building a data set um, and then doing what we call training and then doing what is usually referred to as testing or inference or in our case, like testing is actually making the art, right? So the end result of feeding a horse image to uh, this model and getting a zebra out, like that's what we want to achieve in the end. Um, so that's called testing or inference. We'll talk about that a lot more over the next couple weeks, um, but that's essentially the process. So let's break this down into a couple pieces. So data sets. So most of you are probably used to having heard about how Facebook owns all, all this data about you. Google owns all this data about you. Um, most of the time we think about data as ours, right? Like it is my data. For most of machine learning people, um, what they actually think about in terms of data sets is they think about collections of everyone's data together, right? So this could be a collection of all of the photos that, you know, my lease, Judd and Eric all have on Facebook, right? So we wanna take all of their photos and combine it into a data set. So most data sets are not like individual, like one person's like materials. It's usually a, material, a, a collection of other people's materials together. Um, in this class, all of our data sets will be collections of images. Um, so yeah, so we'll be using mostly images in this class. You will often hear like other data scientists talk about uh, data sets and they might mean like an Excel file or they might mean like, um, you know, a number of text files. But in this class, we'll also be looking at uh, collections of images. Um, so what happens during training? So during training, you take that collection of data sets or your collection of images and you feed it through uh, what is called a network or a model. Um, this is the magic code stuff um, that we won't talk about in this class, thankfully. Um, but this is basically the, the magic, like lots of code written to generate something from this. Um, so it goes into this network and what pops out is what we call a model. So usually people will call both these things models. Um, if it's helpful, I think about this as a network. Um, it is your code. And then the model that comes out of it is actually uh, usually like a text file almost actually. Um, and what it does is it just encodes, it basically is the, all the rules that we generated to make this image into whatever we're trying to do with it, right? So this is a collection of horses. Um, our network says, give me a collection of horses and a collection of zebras. And I will tell you the rules to convert a horse image to a zebra. Um, so if we go back to our horse and zebra image, actually, it's really important to notice this. Um, so we pause this here. You'll see that not only did this horse uh, get converted to a zebra, but all the green background got converted to like a very dusty color, right? And if we think about why that is, because most horses are in lawns where they're like, I don't know, wherever the a holding pen is for a horse is usually green. But zebras tend to live in like desert areas or, or like more dusty areas, right? 
So what it actually learned is it learned not only how to convert a horse to a zebra in terms of texture of the animal, but also the environment that an animal lives in. Um, so this is a case of where the model learns sometimes maybe not even what we wanted it to learn, but it learns a bunch of other stuff together. Um, so it's important to know that like what goes, what you think you're doing in this network isn't always what you actually get out at the end of the time in the model. Um, a lot of times what, what you will think you're sort of training for is ends up being like a little bit different than what you expected. And then lastly, testing. Um, so testing is uh, usually a process of you either give it a single image or you give it two images or you give it some numbers or some text or some other data. Uh, you feed it back through that model and then the model generates yet another image. Um, so in the case of attention GAN, we fed a caption in um, and we fed it into our model and we got an image out. Now what attention GAN was trained on, if we go back a step here, uh, it was trained on a selection of images and a selection of texts. And the idea was that it was a caption for every image. So for every image you fed to the network, you also fed it a caption. Um, and it, the idea was that it would learn the image and the caption together. So then you could actually like reverse, uh, right? So it's like, it took your images and it learned the text from it. And you actually do the reverse when you're testing, which is you give it the text and then it produces an image from it. So a lot of times what we're gonna look at uh, in class today, or the class in the next couple of weeks at least, are what we call pre-trained models. Um, and those are models who have already gone through the training phase. Um, training usually takes weeks uh, for many models. Um, so it's generally not a process that we wanna go through. They also require, usually require like some pretty heavy duty computers. Um, most of us probably don't have access to those either. Um, so most of the models that are already in runway are pre-trained, which means all we're doing is this last step. And what that means is we kind of have to know what this is in order to do this. Um, so you kind of have to like guess or figure out how the training works in order to then do testing from it. So what we're gonna do for at least the next week or two um, is I'm just gonna show you some models and explain what it was trained on and then show you how you can go ahead and like do the, like, do the testing from it, right? So again, in the case of tension GAN, like we didn't have to train the model. Um, we didn't have to give it captions and text and thousands of those. Uh, we were able to just generate a caption and then we produce an image from it. Um, so most of Runway is, is just testing and generating images from pre-trained models. Um, so like I said, if you haven't downloaded Runway yet, um, please do during our break. We will take a break in like five minutes. Um, please go ahead and download Runway. Um, uh, we'll talk a little bit about Runway uh, after the break, but um, at this point I wanna see if you have questions about anything we've talked about so far. You can just go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your questions. Um, I had a question. So I know that you said on week, I think week four, we're doing some training, but you did say that training also takes like a ridiculous amount of time, it sounds like. Um, so is that because we're training just a specific model that doesn't take long or? Yeah, so actually, um, so we'll talk about this a little bit uh, later, but um, yeah, the reason that so there are different techniques in training where you can actually, if a, if a model has already been trained, you can do what's called transfer learning. Um, and you can basically train on top of an already trained model. Um, so in a lot of cases, what you can do is if you find a model that's already been trained to a certain point, uh, you can pick up from there and train additionally on top of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Runway's built-in training feature to do what's called a StyleGAN model. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more probably next week. Um, they have pre-trained models already existing. We'll train on top of those. Training will still take about five to six hours, um, but it's much, much faster. Also, we're not gonna train them nearly as far as a data scientist might. So data scientists like, would probably train it for a couple of days using the same machines that Runway has. We're only gonna train it for a couple of hours and we'll get good results still, but you won't get like pristine, perfect results from it. Uh, what are copyright laws for like uh, training sets? Like what can you use? <laughs> Um, so I'm not a lawyer, so like, don't, please don't take anything from me. Um, I would say that like the, uh, especially in the United States, the rule is essentially like, you can use whatever you want until someone decides to sue you for it. So, um, think about what you're using, think about how you're going to talk about it. Um, my rule of thumb is also like in these classes where you're basically making things from, uh, you know, making to learn and you're not making to like make a profit. Um, you should feel free to do what you want to do. Um, if you're going to take stuff from, I don't know, Disney, um, maybe don't share it publicly or like, you know, don't share it too widely. Um, my guess is that most, most, most companies won't care, like unless somehow your stuff blows up and you're making a profit off of it. 
Um, in the case of, so we're actually gonna look at how to scrape Instagram. So like in the case of Instagram, you could go in and take an, an entire artist's work on their Instagram channel um, and you could train on that. Uh, you can definitely do that. And in fact, I would say like, it's a pretty interesting process to go through that. Um, I would maybe like reach out to them first and be like, hey, is it cool if I do this? It's just a learning project. Like, you know, I'm not trying to make money off of it, but I just wanted to like get permission from you before I do it. Um, or you could not, and you could just surprise them and they make it angry at you. Um, so a lot of this, I would just say is like, you know, do what you think is right. Um, and what you think is right might be different from what I think is right. And like, if I think you're really doing something like abhorrent, I might like, hey, reach out to you and say like, hey, maybe don't do that. Um, so like, I don't know. No, I don't think anyone have a nefarious purpose for doing this, but like, if you were to take pictures of kids off the internet, like that could be problematic. Um, so like, you know, I think there's different levels and we all have different ethics and ways in which we want to approach that. Um, you could also like generate a data set of your own work, um, which I think a lot of artists in my, in these classes have done. Um, but yeah, so it's just sort of like, if you ever have questions about copyright, like, Hey, do you think it'd be okay if I did this? Like you're always welcome to reach out to me and ask. Um, but in general, the rule is just sort of like, don't be an asshole and you'll be fine. Cool. Also runway doesn't ever check. So like. I think they just sort of are like, yeah, you're doing your own thing. So like, please don't, please don't break copyright laws. So. Other questions? Cool. Okay. Um, we can take a break early. So I will, I will, I promise we will always take a break every week um, because two weeks of, or two hours of sitting in a chair is no fun. Um, so please like get up, walk around, grab a drink, do whatever you need to do. Um, let's do like, uh, so let's do a little bit longer this time since I've been talking a lot. Why don't we meet um, at, it's 8.05 for those of us on the East Coast time, but basically like 05, let's meet uh, in, so in like seven minutes, um, we'll come back. Cool? All right. See everybody in a little bit. So I like really quickly like brushed over, uh, I think Eric's sentence, which was like get busy or get busy living or get busy dying. And I wanted to come back to it because I was like, really enamored with the image because I feel like I see like a weird server room when this runs. I didn't, I, I have a screenshot of it, but I wonder if it's like the machine, like talking about itself, like it needs to get busy running or someone's going to turn it off. Um, that's a terrible joke, but like, I don't know. It's some sort of weird, I don't know. We, we always try to like add sentience into these machines and they don't really have any. So anyway, <laughs> um, Today, uh, okay, so like I should have also mentioned like the way that I structure these classes is like usually I have about an hour and a half a lecture and then like I like to spend like the last 30 minutes just feeling questions um, or talking about projects or like other things or like we get, I'm going to show you weird shit that is on the internet that I like, um, whatever we want to do. Um, so usually there'll be like an hour and a half of lecture per week. Sometimes that goes a little bit longer just depending on, on the week um, and then we'll have time to just like chat. Um, people are always welcome to leave like whenever they want to if like if you're like I don't have time for the q and I just want to go do something else feel free we do record all this stuff so um, but that's sort of how we'll structure these classes so the hope is that like you're not sitting in a chair for two hours like completely just listening to me blabber on um, but we can have a little bit of feedback time as well um, so I'm gonna uh, start sharing my screen again and uh, walk us through the second half of the class Cool, so um, now we're gonna get started in Runway. Um, so I hope everyone is able to download the app. If you're not, just let me know and we can walk through it. Um, but essentially Runway is what people have described as Photoshop for ML. Um, so we sort of saw, saw the first example of, of what I was able to do, right? I just was able to load up a model, was able to add some text and would generate an image from it. Um, what's really nice about Runway compared to many, many other machine learning uh, options out there is that it's all GUI, there's no code. So it's entirely an interface that you can work with like you would an Adobe application. Um, we may look at some examples using code for more advanced stuff in the last week of class, but you know, you don't need a coding background to do any of this stuff, which is pretty great. Um, it removes a lot of hurdles. So like I work as a, a machine learning artist and I don't use Runway that often, um, but I still say that Runway uses like reduces a ton of effort um, to run this stuff by yourself. You have to set up servers. You have to install a ton of code, get it all working. Like it, barely never, it almost never works the first time. It's just a lot of work. So Runway is actually very, very easy, like in terms of its setup. Um, and I'll say like, I think there's certain parts of Runway that where the, the interface like improves a ton of functionality. 
Like it really makes it easier to use in certain ways. Um, and we'll talk about most of those ways next week. So next week we'll talk about um, what's called vector inputs and we'll talk about um, how to chain models together. Actually, that'll be work three. But anyway, we'll look at some, some interface examples that we can utilize um, in real life that you can't get like even in like, out of like a general like machine learning box. So there's some really helpful stuff in here and we'll, we'll explore most of them. Um, one of the reasons that I love teaching these classes is based on something that like Allison Parrish has talked about. So Allison Parrish is a artist who works with um, machine learning, but mostly on text. So like this class can also be on images. Um, she's an amazing, if you're interested in like machine learning poetry, she does some amazing, amazing work. Um, but I love this like quote from her, which is like, asking can a computer generate Shakespeare to me is less interesting than asking uh, what would Gertrude Stein have made with TensorFlow? Um, and TensorFlow is uh, one of the languages we use to do machine learning. But essentially what this says is like, and I, and I feel the same way, I don't care about what a machine can do by itself. I really care about what a machine does in the art in the hands of artists. Um, so like making art with like being an artist and like using these tools and that can mean any different way in which you're utilizing these tools. That's what's really interesting to me. So I'm really excited when I teach like folks like you, because I think like this is an example, a perfect example of prior. You're going to do things that will like break the rules of machine learning, but it's still going to be really cool. And the outputs are going to be better. Um, so like I, you know, a lot of people like, I often will get asked or interviewed about like, hey, what, like what about deep fakes? Or like, what about like, will machines be smart enough to make art? And I like, don't really care about either of those questions. Like, this is what really interests me. I'm really interested in seeing what you guys make with this stuff, taking your own artistic mind and bringing it to this work. Um, so this is why I love teaching this class. So in one way, it's actually a really helpful place to get started with it. Um, so I mentioned this a little bit earlier in class, but uh, Runway is like mostly about testing, right? So you can do a little bit of data set stuff in it, um, we'll look at an example of like sort of pre-process, what, what we call data processing or processing your data in Runway, um, probably around week four. Um, we'll look a little bit at training. So when we're gonna train a model, we'll, we'll do some training in there. Um, but Runway, at least in its current state, is really about testing. So it's about during images, about during video, um, during other pieces from, from pre-trained models. And again, because pre-trained models take forever, they cost a lot of money to produce. Um, we kind of like, what Runway has done is sort of like grabbed a bunch of the really good examples of things and brought it into their system. Um, so it'll be, again, for the next couple weeks, we'll just look at cool things we can do with already existing models. Um, so Runway is pre-trained models. Um, you might see a model that someone is putting up on the internet and you'll be like, that's really cool. Can I find that in Runway? And it might not be in there. Um, there's a couple sort of like requirements of pre-trained models within Runway. Um, most of them being that like they have to either input images or output images and not everything some models like will generate like 3D shapes, right? And there's no like 3D output in, um, in Runway. So it, we're a little limited there. Um, while you can do some training in Runway, you have pretty limited capabilities uh, available to you. So you can do a style game model, which is generating images. Um, and then you can do what's called GPT-2, which is generating text. Um, those are the only two training capabilities in Runway today. Um, the Runway folks are like a pretty small team. Um, I might have one, of, their founder usually stops by for like the last class just to sort of talk to everybody. It's a small team of like five or six people. Um, they made some cool like strides, but it's still a pretty small team. So they're not like, you know, there, there will often be like new changes during the middle of this class and I'll have to like change stuff up uh, to sort of like show you new things. Um, but you know, they're not able to add every training feature immediately. Um, they're slowly growing into those things. So um, when Chris is here, maybe at the end of the end of class, if he joins, um, and if you find that you want to train something, like let him know. And he, he's always pretty, they're pretty like good with feedback. Um, I'll also say there's a Runway Slack channel. If you need yet another Slack channel to join, um, there's a Runway Slack. Um, and there's a ton of people in there. And like almost everyone that works at Runway is involved in that channel and will give you feedback or like help you with things. So if you're ever stuck and I can't help you, um, usually what I'll do is I'll jump in Slack and like talk to them. Um, but I also might suggest that you go reach out to them as well. Um, one thing I should note is that Runway is expensive to use. Um, we'll talk about the prices in the next minute, but like uh, it is not the cheapest solution for machine learning out there. So um, it is the easiest to use. And because of that easy ease of use, uh, they charge a pretty decent amount for it. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Like they have some plans you can spend and those sort of things. We'll talk about, we'll talk about all the pricing that you need to be aware of. Um, as a part of this class, you do get a hundred dollars in credits. Um, so you'll have pretty much enough to like, go through this entire class. Um, but just be aware that you like you do burn through those credits fairly quickly. Um, and we'll talk about that uh, next. But 
just know that there are free options out there. They are much harder to use. Um, and there are other options that are much more limited in scope that are also free or cheaper. Um, Runway happens, you know, they want to fund, they want to be a company. So they, they do charge for this, for this work. Um, so the pricing for this as it goes is <clears throat> for when you're testing a model, like when you're just like generating something off of a preaching model, um, it is five cents per minute. Um, now, most of the time that you only need to use it for five, 10 minutes at, at a time. So that's, you know, a quarter, 10 cents, you know, maybe 50 cents, um, but it adds up, right? So, you know, you do that over and over and over again, and it, you will quickly get to a hundred dollars. Um, so it's not the cheapest thing, but it is like, again, like the ease of use makes it very worthwhile. <clears throat> when you're training, so for everyone that just uh, created an account with Runway, you get one free training of 3,000 3, steps. And we'll talk about that at week four. Um, you do get one free training. If you decide that you want to do tra more training than just the one uh, setup, you do need to buy a subscription through them. Um, they have, it's $15 a month or $144 a year. Um, you can cancel at any time. Um, once you get that training or once you get that plan, training still has a cost. So it then costs half a cent per step. Um, so whatever, let me think about that. Let me do the math here. Uh, so 3000 steps, uh, times 0 0.005. So it's $15 for 3000 steps. You, the first one's free, but if you want to pay for them after that, um, it will cost a decent, a like pretty decent chunk of money. I usually train my models for uh, 6,000 steps on runway. So it's 30 bucks. Um, so you'll see that like with the mix of like a hundred dollars that you have, um, unfortunately I can't grant you a plan. So if you do want to do more than one training, you will have to like buy a month plan and then just cancel it when you're done. Um, but then you can still use your credits you already have to do your own training. Um, so just be aware that there are some costs. Um, it used to be when I first started teaching this class, that if you forgot to turn off your model, Runway would just keep running. And like two days later, you would find you burnt through your credits. They've gotten much, much better at that. I think it shuts off after like inactivity after like 10 or 15 minutes. Um, but just know that if you do forget to shut it off, you will be will charge you a certain amount of money. Um, so my general recommendation is when you're done using Runway, just quit the application um, so that you don't have to like worry about whether you turned it off or not, whether you're incurred uh, fees. Um, so just be aware of that um, because it is a thing to be aware of that you can like burn through some money pretty quickly. Uh, one thing I also want to note is if you decide to do your free training before I teach you how to train stuff, um, that's fine. You totally can just know that you might learn stuff in my, like in my session that will help you realize like, oh, maybe I did the wrong thing there. So um, if you're really interested in really, really digging into Runway and you want to get started, you want to like really play around, um, I would probably recommend buying one of the creator plans for the first month or so. Again, you can cancel any time and they're pretty, pretty flexible with that. Um, but I find that, I think I probably saw that about half of my previous class uh, want to do more than one training. Um, so just think about that. Um, it is something to know um, that you might want to go ahead and spend the $15 a month. Um, so we're going to do a quick demo. I'm going to walk you through all the Runway interface. Um, Runway has like a decent amount of different sections. Um, and I find it's helpful if I just sort of explain like how each section works. Um, so let's just see here. Yep. So, okay. So let's click it off here. So when you open Runway for the very first time, I'm going to quit this and just open it. You will come to an interface uh, that says browse models, open workspaces and train a model. So you probably know what the first two are now, right? Because not broad, browsing models are uh, your pre-trained models. So these are models that are all available already within Runway. Um, you can just dig through them and start to play with them. Training is where you're going to do the training for your model. Um, it is where uh, we're going to look at training in week four. This is where we're going to train our style again model. Workspaces are actually the, the place in which you uh, do most of your testing. Um, so I'm going to actually start with browsing models and I'm going to show you how to add stuff to your workspace from there. So, um, they actually just up updated the interface, uh, earlier this week, which is always fun. Um, they have a section called quick action. So if you're looking to do something really quickly and like, you know, that these things exist, um, there's some helpful sort of quick jump in and do things, uh, if you're interested, um, along the left-hand column here, uh, is what we call workspaces. Uh, models, training, exports, and hosted models. Um, we'll talk about hosted models at the end of week five, I think. Um, hosted models are basically if you want to make your work public on like a web URL, um, you can share it that way. Uh, just know that it still costs a decent amount of money to do that. 
Um, but we'll talk about that at the, at the very end of class in case you want to public, uh, publish your uh, projects. Um, we're mostly going to look at workspaces, models, and training, and exports uh, today. So models. Um, so the thing to know about models is there are a lot of models inside of Runway. Uh, and it can get very confusing or just like, it can feel like a lot the first time you enter into it. Um, along here are sort of like, most of you will probably not see this. Uh, I have been able to add models to Runway. Um, most of you will probably jump directly to browse models. Uh, I do not recommend browsing using just sort of like scrolling through all these. It just can feel like a lot, especially if you click on view all. Um, there's probably like hundreds of models in here. Yeah, 120 models that, are, that you can view. Um, what I would recommend doing is if you, the, on the first time you want to explore Runway, um, go through the categories. So clicking on category, you'll see there is a thing called community, and that is all StyleGAN models. So these are models that have been trained by other people using Runway that they've made available to uh, the public. Um, so if you want to just look at just what people have created with StyleGAN, uh, you can click on this. Um, this might give you examples of like what you might want to do in week four. Um, you'll see someone has made a pizza generator. So this will generate new images of pizza. Um, there are, this looks like maybe uh, historic buildings. Um, someone has trained hand-drawn dinosaurs, um, gargoyles. There's just a ton of different models in here. There's a Simpsons model, so clearly the Simpsons haven't sued anyone yet. Um, there's a Brutalist architecture model. There's a lot of models in here. So basically you could go through here and just sort of see like what other people have already produced. Um, I would recommend like going through this just to see like maybe you don't want to make your own Simpsons model. Um, maybe you do, I don't know. Um, but like because someone has already spent a certain amount of money to make this, you might just want to use theirs. Um, this is all StyleGAN. I generally skip this one because it's, I generally will produce my own style game models if I want to. Uh, the categories you have after the community categories are image synthesis, motion capture, text-based, recognition, post-processing, style transfer, and workflow. I generally just recommend like go through each one of them and just sort of see what's in there. Um, so image synthesis is going to be uh, models where you can create images. Um, so this is where attention GAN was um, because the input is a text, but the output is an image. Um, it follows into, falls into the image synthesis category. Um, there's a thing called Big GAN, Big Bi GAN. We'll look at a bunch of these uh, throughout the next couple weeks. But that's image synthesis, um, motion capture. So if you're interested in like uh, like taking video and getting poses out of it, um, that's like a whole specific like field of industry, like within um, video games and other things. There are a bunch of motion capture uh, pose capture materials. We won't go over most of these in class, but if you're interested in one of them. Um, I have some folks who are really interested in that on my Slack channel. I'm happy to like intro you to them and they can walk you through stuff. Um, text-based. So this is all text generators. So this is probably also community work where you can generate your own um, GPT-2 on a certain body of text and it will generate new uh, text in that, uh, in that category, right? So someone's trained it on Little Women. So it'll generate uh, new Little Women text. It's pretty interesting. Um, we probably won't look at a lot of this stuff, but we'll show like how maybe to use it uh, to generate images. Like you could... Uh, one of the cool things that's available in Runway is you could, uh, what we call chain, you could chain one of these models up to uh, attention GAN, right? So you could have little women pros coming out and then you could hook that up to an attention GAN model and get maybe little women images out, maybe, probably not, just based on what we saw with attention GAN, but it's pretty interesting. Um, recognition, this is all image recognition stuff. So if you wanna do classifiers or um, read text or detect faces, uh, again, we won't cover this in, the, in this class, but if you're interested in it, I'll, I can just let me know. Um, post-processing. So post-processing is actually pretty cool. Um, there's some stuff in here that even as a designer, you might be interested in. Um, there are things called super resolution networks, which is a, actually a machine learning model that can scale up images. So if you ever use like Adobe Photoshop and try to scale an image, you know it gets really blurry, right? Um, these machine learning models are slightly better than that. They will still be kind of blurry, but they will definitely be better than um, using traditional Photoshop means. So I think Photoshop just recently actually added a machine learning model to do image super resolution in Photoshop. Um, but you can play with the different versions. Every, every one of these models is slightly different, so you can play with it and see what you want to do. So a lot of times we'll, what I will do in using Runway is that my last chain um, will be to one of these super resolution networks. So I'll get a really small image out of my other models, and then when I put it into this network, I get a bigger image. Um, and it resolution is better, not perfect, but it's better. Style transfer, we'll talk about more next week. Um, there are a ton of style transfer models in here. I do not like any of them, but we'll talk about, I, I'm gonna upload one of my own um, and we can play with that uh, next week. Uh, and then workflow, workflow tools are just like things like edge detection. Um, there's an automatic image cropping tool that I've played with before. 
Um, there's things called segment analysis or semantic maps. We'll, we'll talk about that maybe, maybe next week. Um, but there are ways in which you can get uh, sort of the outlines of images as well. Um, so there's lots of stuff in here. There's a ton of models. Your homework essentially will be to like dig through some models and play with stuff. Um, but just to sort of give you a basic idea of how these work. Um, so I just want to show you like sort of how one of these models will work. Uh, so there's two things to know. When you're looking at the model interface, when you hover over one of these models, there is a thing called learn more and there's a thing called add to workspace. I highly recommend that the first thing you do, so if you click anywhere up here, it's going to automatically just add it to your workspace. Um, I highly recommend that when you are looking at a model, that you actually go to the learn more button. So click on the little eyeball here. And this will bring up um, sort of a gallery of different images. It generally will bring up a description of how it works. And then also what's really, really cool, um, well, at least cool if you're really into nerdy stuff, is it links to a couple things. So it links to a thing called a GitHub repo. Most of these models are already hosted on GitHub. Um, so if you know what that is and you want to play with it, or you want to see what the code looks like, you can look at it here. Um, Colab notebooks are a way to sort of play with code live in the environment. Um, but the thing I always recommend people check out is they check out this thing called the paper. Um, and papers are because these are written by data, by data scientists. Um, the way in which they publish their work uh, is both through GitHub, but then also they write a paper about it where they talk about why they did what they did. It's very science-like. It's very, you know, interesting in that they like, well, there's a ton of, there was a ton of math in these PDFs and I always gloss over that. Um, but usually inside the PDF is there's a ton of images. Um, usually images of how their example working with things. Um, so this is, so see like this was called, what was the model called? Uh, hold on one second. So the model is called Big Bygam, but the paper is called Large Scale Adversarial Representation Learning. Um, again, don't worry about like having to read these things or like you can read them and I like, you know, I've done this for a couple of years now and I understand about half of what these papers are talking about. Um, most of the time I just scroll through them and I just look for pretty pictures to understand what they're doing. Um, so in this case, here is an, here's a, an image. Um, and what I sort of understand what they're doing is they're like, at the top row here are images they're inputting into the model. And then in the bottom image, they're getting out something that like is closely representative of it, right? So if I zoom in here, you'll see um, top image is a dog, uh, an, an ape, um, someone snow blowing their yard or walking their dogs. Um, you know, so again, like the idea is that they input an image at the top and they get out an image at the bottom. Um, so this sort of helps me understand what the thing is actually doing. Because um, a lot of times, like if you come to Runway, and you just try to read this, you still don't really understand what's actually going on here. Um, so I always recommend that when you're first exploring a model, look at the learn me or the learn more and just sort of like try to understand a little bit of how it works. Um, once you decide you know you want to like play with the model, um, you can add to workspaces. And the add to workspace uh, can either happen up here in the right-hand corner or it can happen back on that model page and you just click on the add to workspace. Um, workspaces are essentially that your it brings all of your connections into one area. Um, so in the case of, we'll look at this, I think in the week three, we'll look at chaining. So in order to chain all of your models, so say I want to have my little women model connected to my attention game model, connected to my um, super resolution model, you'll need to add all three of those to the same workspace. Um, workspaces are pretty messy, I'll show you mine, but I generally will just always add new stuff to a new workspace. Um, they give you a funny sort of uh, recommended name. You can always just you know, add, change it and just be like big bygan tests. And now you're in the workspace. So this is pretty similar. You probably saw this when I was demoing this work earlier. Um, once you're in a workspace, you then have your image and you have your output. Uh, and it's helpful to kind of know, like this will also help show you what your input is meant to be, right? So this is input image and you've got a file um, and you can open that file and you can start to play with it. Um, so you'll see over here that I have uh, a number of different models um, and workspaces. Um, so inside here is one called FreeGAN. Um, this, is a, this is a style GAN model I trained myself. Um, there's big GAN, there's a bunch of models in here. Um, and you can play with any of these once they're in your workspace. But they have to be in a, in a workspace of some kind for you to start to play with them. Um, so I would imagine that for many of you, your workspaces are empty. And the way uh, to fix that is you have to find a model you want to play with and then add it to your, to your workspace. Um, cool. Any questions about the runway interface? OK. Um, so we'll go over training a lot more in week four. And we'll go over exports as well uh, in a couple weeks. Maybe next week. We'll see. 
Um, but I do want to show, I want to show you like one more demo, which is an example of a model that I just finished and put in Runway. Um, so if you are like more technically inclined and you've either done machine learning, I don't know if anyone has, um, you can port in your own models into Runway. Um, so here's a model that I recently brought in, um, I brought in this weekend. Um, it is a model that essentially converts, uh, it converts images, usually pictures of people's faces, um, and it converts them to these weird flower shape things. Um, so I'm just gonna walk through like sort of how this would work, right? So if you come over here and you find this, you can see that um, you've got paper, you've got a GitHub repo, um, those sort of things. Uh, I'm gonna add this to a brand new workspace. Um, let's just call it Munit. Now, uh, you see the models on, let's talk a little bit about your workspace and how it works. Um, so along the left, or, so the left hand side is all of your workspaces. So we're currently in this one down here, uh, which is called Munit. Along the right hand is all of your options for your model. Um, so usually in models that produce images, there'll be a thing called a checkpoint. That just means which model do you wanna work with? Um, so you can have multiple models inside of one of these uh, runway models. Um, so there are like, I could have uploaded, there's I think um, a cats to dogs version. So you can upload a photo of a cat and I'll convert it to a dog photo. Um, this is the one that I use, which is uh, faces to plants, um, those sort of things. Um, but you, sometimes there'll be multiple options over here. Um, you also see there's some sliders. The, every model will have slightly different sort of uh, things to play with. And part of your job is to sort of explore and play with them and figure out how it works. Usually what'll happen um, is that the top part, it'll say setup or something. And that will be, um, there'll be stuff you need to set before you actually start your model. Um, whereas if you see inference options, that means things you can do while your model is running. Um, and that might be a little confusing, but let me just show you sort of how that works. So right now my machine or my model is not running, right? So at the very bottom here, you'll see a button that says run remotely. Um, Essentially, I'm not being charged. So in the entire time that I've been exploring models, there hasn't been any charges on my account, right? They haven't charged me any of those five cents per, per minute or whatever. They just let me explore things. Um, as soon as I hit this button that says run remotely, um, it is going to start charging me. So it's gonna charge me five cents per minute while I run this model. Um, now there's a couple ways to check to see how much money you have in your account. If you come over here to your settings all the way in the, in the bottom left and you click here, you'll see uh, you have a balance running. Um, so Basically, if you got credits from me, which you should have gotten that email, let me know if you haven't, um, you can add that to your credits and they should show up here. So if you also, if when you first download Runway, you get $15 in free credits. Um, so at this point, if you've done that and uh, used the, the coupon code I gave you, you should have $115 of credits in here. Uh, maybe some of you have already played with it or used it. Maybe you've used up a little bit of your time. Um, but basically that's, that's how to check to see uh, how much money you have available to you. So uh, I'm gonna get started here with this model. So when I press this button, it's gonna turn orange and that means I'm gonna start getting charged. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this. You'll see it's running. Um, so this is already started up. Some of these take a little while to start up. This one happened pretty quickly. So now I need to go over here and pick an image. So you'll see here's an input source. Um, so if you click on this uh, pull down menu, you get either a camera option or a file option. And you'll see along the top here, you also have camera or file. Um, so in this case, let's just get started with the camera. So because I have a built-in camera on my machine, I'm gonna click this button and I'm gonna pull up my camera and you can see my face here. And you can see it is starting to generate images. And because it's my camera, I can take it about as often as I want, right? Now, the truth is, I don't, think this, I don't think this model is really meant to work with a camera. It works okay. Um, the model is really meant to work with uploaded photos of people. Um, so if you find a really good portrait image, um, it should work better. So I'm gonna switch to file. Oops. I'm gonna switch to file right here. And I'm gonna click open file. Um, and I, found a really good photo of Rihanna yesterday. So we're gonna use Rihanna. Now this model will yell at you if you upload something in really high res, uh, you're fine in this model. It happens, the inference or training or testing happens really quickly here. Some other models, it might take you like, we'll look at my style transfer model next, next week. It will take a long time to produce a model with really high res, so I don't recommend it. Um, in general, you're, you're, you can find to test this. It might just take a little bit of a while. 
Um, so I'm going to say yes. I'm going to continue uploading a large image. Now it's loaded. How high res are you talking? Like oh, over 72 DPI? Uh, yeah, so DPI doesn't matter. It just means pure, pure pixels matter more than DPI. Um, so in, my, in this case, it's like, let's say anything over 1,200 pixels, it's going to be like, you might be entering slow to slow down territory. Sometimes a model won't run if, it's too, if the image you're feeding is too large. Um, right. Yeah, so just have to be, you have to play with it. Each model is going to be a little bit different. Okay. Um, yeah. So, okay, so here we have Rihanna um, converted to plants. Um, so there's one cool feature about this model, which is our style slider here. So this model um, happens to, it can generate multiple styles of plants uh, based on the slider. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the slider and I'm gonna change the number. Actually, let's just use the slider. So we'll grab, so this is style one. We'll get style 389. So we got some purple there. So the truth about these styles is like, not all of them are good. Um, like that first one was actually pretty nice. Um, but some of these are blurry. Some of these you don't make out really great facial details. Um, you know, that one's pretty interesting in that the eyes are basically leaves, but like, you know, so as we play with these, we'll see that like each one of these has a different sort of look to it. So as you're tinkering with this, is it exporting these photos or is it saving these photos? Great question. So it is not saving these photos. Um, if I want to save one of these photos, like let's go back to one because I actually like how that one looks. Um, so if I do like this image, there's a button right here that says save image. So I can click save and this will save out this image. You give it a name, you can save it uh, and that saves out the image. Um, so it is important to know that like while you're tinkering, you're not saving anything um, and you do want to sort of save it out uh, when you're ready to go. Um, yeah, so you can just like, one of the things that's also nice is there are some, like you can play with this image um, in sort of like just some normal slider type of stuff. So if I wanted to get really weird and just flip Rihanna upside down, I can do that within um, sort of like some really simple like Photoshop features here. Um, so there we go. That's Rihanna upside down now with plants. Um, you know, in some cases, if I want to like really, really quickly go through some options, what I will usually do is I'll play with these image sliders and I'll crank it down a little bit. Um, basically, the, the smaller your image is, the faster it's going to be able to uh, test. Um, so see like really quickly like this, I can get like a sort of a feeling for like, well, this looks too blurry or like this is like too much of like the colors aren't really plant like or whatever. Um, so I can sort of like bounce around. You'll see these run a little bit faster. So you'll see there's a little, a little clock here that says inference time. That's how long it took to run to, to make this uh, image. Um, so sometimes it's helpful to know like how long a thing takes to produce. Um, sometimes it isn't. I'll just generally like play with stuff and sort of see what happens. It almost looks like uh, a Star Wars thing more than it does Rihanna. Um, cool, so let's actually just, I'll find another image. So I can also like say that the images these were trained on were very specific crops of people's faces. Um, so sometimes it's helpful to sort of know what it was trained on. So it was trained on images that look like this. Um, so I'm actually just gonna use this image and I think we'll get slightly better results. Although I'm gonna flip her back upside down, back right side up. So slightly better results. Um, again, depending on what style you use, you'll get different images. Sounds pretty interesting, but also kind of scary. Again, half this stuff ends up just being like horror imagery. That was pretty good, actually. You get a little bit of eye detail and you get some like sparse flowers. Um, so normally, like I wouldn't play with my own model in runway like this, but uh, this is sort of, I just set it up so we can play with it a little bit. Um, so yeah, so like there's a ton of different models inside of Runway. Um, and my recommendation is for you to spend the next week or two just like playing with different models. Getting a feel for what they do, getting a feel for what they don't do. Um, during a list of questions for me of like, hey, I tried to play this model and I couldn't figure out how it works. Um, maybe I can help you with those things, sort of things. Um, so this is uh, a model you're welcome to play with. I don't know if it's actually, it's, it's public now, but I don't know if it's actually listed in their models. Um, I think that they like white, oh, it is here. Okay, so they white label uh, their list. So I can see how many people have run this. So 133, it's had 133 runs so far. 20 of those are probably me, but that's fine. Um, still cool to see people using my model. Um, we won't cover like how to get your stuff in a, in a, into a runway this class, because I don't think anyone's gonna build their stuff outside of it. But if you are interested, I can tell you sort of the process to do that. Um, so that model is probably still running, right? Yeah, so there's a little blue icon here that says one. That means my model is still running. 
Um, the way to stop your model is to come over here and hit stop. Or uh, my, my preferred method is to come to my settings and just hit stop while running models. That way in case there's something hiding behind the scenes that I don't know about, um, this just stops everything. It says, are you sure you wanna stop your model? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I don't know how quickly the balance updates. It's definitely like not like 24 hours. It's definitely like an hour or less. It might even be automatic. I didn't check to see what I was at before, um, but it gives you pretty good real time on like how much money you have left. Um, we'll talk about this more when we get to training, but uh, basically if you have less money in your account than you can train for, you don't want to do a training because uh, if you run out of money, it will stop in the middle of the training and it, your model will be broken. So don't do that. Talk about that more in week four, but like you do kind of want to make sure you have a good balance uh, inside of your inside of runway just to make sure that it doesn't get shut off on you um, before you're ready. Um, cool. So I, like that's pretty much it for today's class. Um, I did want to mention that. Um, let's see if I can pull up my slides here really quickly. Ah. Got this stupid little um, bar up here. Uh, there we go. So um, your homework for next week is to basically just play around. Um, so they just like find some models runway, play around with them, um, make some weird images, make some fun images. Uh, my hope is that if you want to use the Slack channel, that you'll just sort of like do like a, a show and tell kind of report about like, hey, here's the model I used. Here's what I think the inputs and outputs were. Um, here's what I couldn't figure out about the model. Um, and then just like post some images. Um, hopefully that'll just be like a fun like intro week to, to, the, to the class. Um, so again, I think the video I sent around to everyone um, to get runway set up also include a little bit of just like exploring the models. Um, if it didn't, I have another one for it. I've got like 15 videos of everything at this point. So if you want a, a, an intro to like sort of like look at some models, I'm happy to share that with you. Um, and then I think, so assignment two is like, um, so there are, there's a, run, there's a runway Slack channel there's a Runway YouTube channel. Um, there's a bunch of stuff from previous classes that I've taught um, of what people have made. There's the share projects in my Slack channel if you want to check out some stuff. Um, just start to think about like, hey, this is a cool model. I kind of like what's going on here. Maybe I would want to figure out how to do something bigger with this. Or, um, you know, I really want to do something with training my own data set. So maybe I should start to like figure out if I have 500 images or whatever to like start to pull uh, all those resources together. Um, so we don't have to jump right into a big project, but it's Maybe good to just start taking some notes on what you found interesting or what you found like wasn't interesting um, and just start to take some notes on what you want to maybe think about making. Um, like maybe next week we'll take a little bit of time in that class and I'll just have people like sort of talk about what, they, what they've seen so far they think is interesting and maybe what they want to work on. Um, basically like again, next couple weeks of class are really about you. So if there's something you're really interested in working on, um, just give me a heads up and I can like sort of like tailor some stuff to you. Um, so that's it for this class. Um, like I said, we'll hang out for another 20, 25 minutes and like just field some questions or like if you want to like see another model that I can demo or whatever, um, we can do that. Um, but at this point, if you like need to head out, like you're more than welcome to um, and we'll be recording this. So everyone will get rid of the recording whenever this is uh, pretty much set to go. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it for today. Um, any questions from folks? I'll stop sharing my screen and we can just see each other. Any favorite wormholes or places to just jump off into discovery when <clears throat> people are starting out? Um, yeah, I would generally say like, I think the, this, actually, I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen, of course, cause I'm just gonna like bounce back and forth between talking to you and being like, this is a cool thing to check out. Um, let me share my screen really quickly and let me just show you. Um, so I think the, I think Runway has a YouTube channel or Runway has, also has an Instagram account um, that is, I believe Runway app, let's try this. Um, so they will share cool projects in, in runway that they've made, like that they have seen people make. Um, it's always good to just sort of dig into here and just sort of see what's, what's available, what's on here. Um, see weird stuff. I mean, realistically, like, I think like just open up a model inside a runway and just start playing with it and see what you can make out of it or see what you can't. Um, in general, like that's just like a good way to learn is like just to try to break something and see, we'll see what happens. Um, but it, I think especially like with runway, like the thing is to know just like what's the input it expects. And as long as you can figure out what the input is, like just feed it an input and then like see what happens with it from there. Um, sometimes nothing will happen. Sometimes you'll get an error message. Sometimes like you won't really know and then you can just like sort of keep feeding it new images. So sometimes it's good just like have a folder of images you just need to play with and see what happens. Um, they also have a, a Twitter account 
um, that I believe is Runway ML. So it's like Runway ML and Runway App. So they'll share a bunch of work. Um, I would also recommend, so last night, um, my previous class did a YouTube like live stream of their projects. Um, and I'll share that link in the Slack channel or actually, you know what, I'm gonna start actually taking notes here for myself. Um, so I'll make sure I share that um, in our class notes as well. Um, so this is my YouTube account. Um, basically what you wanna do to find live streams is go to videos and then go to uploads and switch to live streams. And when you go to live streams, um, there is the Runway ML student show and tell. Um, check that out. I will say the first 20 minutes, like got kind of, we had some technical issues, but we got it sort of sorted out after, the, after about 20 minutes. Um, so I think seven or eight students shared projects that they made. Um, and they were all sort of at the same level you guys are at. It was like their first time taking in this class. Um, so check those out. Cause I think there's some really cool experiments there and also like some good like ways to get started there. Um, and with most, most of the YouTube videos, it's like watch it at one and a half speed and you can like quickly burn through that hour in like 40 minutes or whatever. So um, I'll make sure I add that uh, to that as well. Um, and if you're interested, uh, Sunday um, at, a, at 12.30 Eastern Standard Time, um, my Style Gang 2 class is gonna do a show and tell as well of their work. Um, this will be a little bit more advanced than, um, than this class, but there's still be cool work that you, you can get inspired by and maybe get some ideas from. Um, so you can check that out as well. Uh, obviously that's a live stream, so if you wanna watch it live, you can, but it'll be recorded and, and posted there as well. Um, I think I told Kara this as well, but um, all of the previous classes uh, were, are also on YouTube. So um, if you go to playlists um, and then go to, man, this is like, the UI for, for YouTube is pretty gnarly. Um, I'll post a link to this as well. So this is, um, this is all of the videos from my previous runway class. So week two has, um, has some inspiration materials. I will probably show some of these projects again next week, but I'll also show some new stuff next week. So if you wanna watch this, um, there's probably some cool examples in the first half, of the, half hour of this video as well. Um, so that's probably like good stuff to start with. Um, I will say, I'm not trying to be cocky here, but I think my students make the best works. Or, so like, I think like getting inspiration from like my students will really help you because, probably because it's like exactly the same class you're getting, but also I just think they make really interesting work because they're also artists and stuff. Um, you, the Runway folks, like there's a couple of really great artists that use Runway, but like in general, it's like maybe harder to figure out what they're doing. Um, whereas most everything that my students are doing are stuff that, I've, I've, that are being taught in this class. So you can always figure it out. Or if they're like, I really love that project that that person did. Can you show me how they did that or how to do it? What are the questions we got? Um, I noticed there's a model that doesn't take photos or text, but a vector. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we're gonna go over vector inputs uh, tomorrow or next week. Um, I'll show you the, the two second version of how to use uh, a vector input because I kind of leave people hanging for the first week just to sort of see if they can figure it out. But I think like I'll just show you because I think it's like helpful to sort of understand how that works. Um, so a model like BigGAN uses this. Um, I am not sharing my screen yet. So let me turn sharing back on. There we go. Uh, you can see my screen, right? Runway. Cool. Okay. Um, so we're going to add uh, BigGAN to a uh, new workspace. Actually, I'll just edit this one. So BigGAN takes a thing called a vector input. A vector input, um, we'll talk about the whole idea behind vectors um, next week, but just to quickly give you an idea of what this works with, um, a vector produces a grid of images. This is the interface for vectors. Um, and basically what that does, is it gives you a, an idea of like the space, we'll, we'll talk about, I, I can't like, I can't talk about this without using terminology that we'll talk about next week. But basically gives you an idea of what all, what's, what all the images are available within this model. This one will probably be a little slow, just get started. Um, but essentially the way that a GAN model works is it generates what we call a space, um, which is a hyper-dimensional space. Um, and at each one of these points in that space is a different image. Um, so this is clearly like a, a turtle model. There's also a bunch of categories inside of BigGAN that I think are kind of fun to play with. Um, 
I might be able to switch this. Let me see. Yeah, so I can actually switch this. So let's switch to the um, from the turtle image. Let's switch to a let's switch to the bulldogs or bullfrogs. I want I want something cuter than than reptiles. Sorry if you're like a reptile pet fan. I want I feel like I show so many scary images. I want something cuter. Is there a dog in here? There are like millions of dogs in here. Okay, let's choose a French bulldog. That sounds cute. Okay, so here are all the French Bulldog options within this model. You'll see this produces a grid of images. And over here on the right is a thing called sampling distance, and that's how, how different the images are from each other. So I'm just gonna crank this up, um, and you'll see it'll reset the grid image. And now you'll see like the images next to each other are, are different. They're, there's a bigger diversity between these images. So here's a different dog, here's a different Bulldog. It's still creepy, it doesn't have its back legs. This might actually be worse than looking at weird reptiles. Um, <laughs> but basically like here, this is a bunch of different bulldogs. That one's pretty cute, that one's pretty normal. Um, so, and as you explore these spaces, you'll see that like sort of essentially like things over here to the bottom left are like big dog heads and brown and things that are like maybe more up right here are like green background with like a dog lying down. The idea is that like whatever is like in the similar region is sort of similar images. Um, that's sort of how the vector input works. Uh, we'll talk a lot more about exactly what that means next week. Um, but yeah, you can essentially use this by just sort of like moving around the space and by tweaking this sampling distance, you get images that are really, really close to each other or really far away from each other. Cool, thanks for the intro. Yeah. For models with, um, with categories like, like those, if you're training something on top of those, do the different types of images fall at, like get designated on top of those categories? Um, so because it's a, it was big GAN, you can't actually train a big GAN model inside Runway. Um, so we don't have to worry about that for this class. Um, most of the models that we're gonna train off of don't have categories. Uh, but we will talk about transfer learning in week four and transfer learning, you, there, is a, there is a moment where there is, again, kind of like a horror freak show of like you transitioning away from one of these models. So the model we're gonna use mostly in our classes are gonna be the face model. Um, it's really high resolution in its faces, but there's like a weird couple steps between like faces and whatever images we're making where it's like a weird mishmash of them. Um, so we'll talk, about, we'll talk about that more in future weeks, but uh, yes, you do actually like transfer from these other images. Eventually it all goes away, so there will be no faces left in your model, but there is like a weird transition period. What are the questions? Hey, Derek. I noticed hey. that when you had your um, uh, runway open, there was a there was a model that that had a lot of um, ge like geometric looking shapes and and color color blobs. Um, where do you find uh, models like that to work with? Uh, so yeah. So am I sharing my screen again? Not right. Let me share my screen. I uh, no. show you. Cool. Um, so that's actually a model that I trained. So I trained that for the last, my last roommate class as a demo. Um, so this is a model called uh, Free Again. This is actually, so again, I told you you can steal anyone's work off of Instagram. This is actually stolen from an artist by the name of Freya Buckler, um, who does just these really like beautiful geometric shapes. Um, I sort of purposely like under trained this so it didn't look exactly like her work. Um, and we'll talk about undertraining and overtraining like later when we do training. But um, yeah, so this generates more like sort of like wavy patterns and it does, her work is like very strictly ge geometry. Um, so I did basically what we'll talk about in this class, which is I scraped her work from Instagram um, and ran, ran it through a trainer. Um, I, I don't make this model public just because obviously like for copyright reasons and for art reasons, it's like not something I want to make available to other folks inside a runway. Um, but yeah, so like, again, it's part of it's just like, Go find some images. Like I would say like what I, if I did want to make this model public, what I would do is probably like search like hashtag geometry on Instagram. Maybe get like uh, some of Freya's work, some of some other artists work, some, maybe some other geometry work and then throw them all in the mix and like train off that. And that, that feels like that would be far enough away from like ripping off just one artist into a place of where it's like kind of just a mishmash of things. 
Um, and I would feel comfortable releasing that publicly, right? Because it's also like, if you actually look at Freya's work, like this doesn't look like her work, you could sort of understand where it's coming from, um, but it's not one-to-one. -one. And like, I think it's like, as long as, uh, what is it? Um, there's some there's some use, there's some like terminology in copyright world where it's like, if it's modified enough, it's like kind of legally acceptable. Um, for me personally, this doesn't feel modified enough, but I think I could get, a, get to a place where it would feel modified enough. Cool, thank you for sharing. Um, how many images did you use to train that one? That's a great question. I can actually look and see. Um, it looks like about 975 images. Um, if I were to go through these, I would guess that like probably about 850 of them are good. So we'll talk a little bit about this in week three, which is uh, with data sets, the hardest part of a data set is cleaning it. Um, so like if you look at anyone's Instagram account, like I always do the, I, my joke for this class is I always scrape Braulio's Instagram account um, just because I did it in front of him the, the first day and he like freaked out in a good way. He thought it was hilarious. But like, um, you know, if you go through Braulio's account, there's a ton of really good images. And then there's like an image of like something that isn't like him with a photo of a hot dog or something, right? Like it's like, so like, again, when you're doing data sets, you have to sort of clean a lot of that stuff out, right? So that means like one of your jobs for, for at least for this class, if you want to produce a nice data set is to like scrape all these images and then like sit down and go through a thousand images and delete stuff. Um, that is like part of the process for, for creating data sets. Um, so I think with Freya, I think I cleaned up like maybe 200, 250 images of hers. And I just sort of like, you know what, screw it. Like this is just for a demo. So I threw it all in there and it still turned out pretty good. So it's also like, we'll talk about this again when we get into data sets, but like how much of a perfect data set do you need is like kind of a, a question mark and you'll sort of see what you need to do. Um, another thing I'll talk about is I do a lot of training on video data sets. So if you imagine a video is just a, uh, a video is just a sequence of still images. Um, you can convert, you can like take all those still images out and you get a pretty big data set just from that. Um, so I've done that work a little bit. Um, if you want to play with that, um, we can talk about that. Uh, the thing about producing stuff from video section, let me just show you what this one looks like. Um, I'll go to my Instagram account and I can show you. Um, so if you train stuff on video, um, sometimes what will happen is it basically just repeats the video back to you, but like in a really weird time distorted way. So this is what this one does. So it like kind of knows the sequence, but it doesn't really at the same time. Um, so just some really interesting stuff you get with doing like a video data set compared to like an image data set. Um, so each of these will give you different sort of feelings or different ways of working. Um, and we'll look at, so this, loop, this video loops perfectly. We'll look at how to do that um, in class as well. So if you wanna produce like perfect loops on Instagram, it's pretty nice. You can do that uh, pretty easily through uh, Runway. As we're starting to think about um, what kind of training we wanna do or maybe some of the um, things that we wanna scrape, do you have any tips about going about like scraping images or is there some program you use or is it just like you're going and manually downloading a thousand images or <laughs> yeah so um so all this is a great thing i'll make a note of this as well um in for everyone that um i have a bunch of videos on how on some tutorials on how to do scraping so i've got tutorials on scraping instagram Flickr, uh google images I don't know. I've got a couple other ones, um, but basically like uh, I'll just link to those videos. Um, we'll go over in class how to scrape Instagram because it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward. Um, but I've also done stuff where I've just downloaded a thousand images, right? Like um, we're all kind of stuck at home. So like, again, maybe if you have kids, it's different. But like for me, it's like I just sit and watch TV like all weekend. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll turn on a TV show that I don't really love and I'll just start downloading stuff. Um, you can go through a lot in a couple hours that way. Um, that's totally a reasonable thing. I also have some libraries that I've built that allow you to like auto crop images uh, in a nice way or like, um, so for the style gam model, I'll mention all the images need to be square, which is why Instagram's kind of nice. Um, but if you have all rectangle images, you've got to figure out, do you want to crop into them? Do you want to like maybe mirror your edges so you get like the same size, but like that sort of thing. Um, I have a bunch of tools that can do that sort of, you just feed it a folder and it does it for you. Um, but you know, if that way you don't have to like open a thousand images in Photoshop and do whatever editing you need to. Um, but I'll, I'll include some videos, some links to some videos and tutorials I have for that. 
there's no expectation that you guys like have to do any of that. But if you are like really interested in like figuring out the perfect data set for you, um, I'm happy to help walk you through some of those steps as well. And I will say um, the data set tutorial stuff, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't require coding, but it requires you to be a little bit comfortable with like writing like command line stuff. But if you follow the videos step by step, um, it should be fine. Um, I've had other folks be able to do it. And if you run into any issues, you can just let me know. But um, it does require a little bit more than just like, you know, finding a URL and adding it or whatever. So. Any other questions? All right. I always forget week one is always quiet because everyone's like, like, oh, I don't want to speak up or whatever. Next week, you guys are just going to be like, what about this? What about this? What about this? And I'll just be like, guys, it's like 10 o'clock. We got to go. Um, so <laughs> I look forward to all your questions next week. Um, again, there will be a video for this. I'll put it up tonight. I'll like leave a note in the Slack channel that the video is up. Um, but otherwise, just like have fun this week and start playing with stuff. Um, as always, you're always welcome to drop notes or questions in the Slack channel, um, and I'll answer them as quickly as I can. Um, and otherwise, I'll see you next week. Uh, so hopefully, this has been a fun first week. Um, please feel free to let me know if you're lost at any moment, and I'm happy to walk you through things. Um, but yeah, I'll see everyone next week. Cool? Hey guys, All right. Thanks. All right, bye, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you.